Okay, wow, we're live. Hi, this is Joanne Manji. I'm hosting again. Can't get rid of me that easily. Uh, everybody's been doing a great job hosting. Uh, I'm back because we have, uh, we rescheduled Sherry McGraw. We didn't want to let her off the hook. This is going to be amazing. Um, so, you know, stay tuned for that. This is my new little muse. This is Jack Black. Yep, that's Jack. Okay, you'll probably see him again sometime. But in the meantime, uh, we want to tell you about a few things. Um, Amandine, do you want to... Um... It's Art School Live with Eric Rose. Now. Here's your host, Eric Rose. Eric, he'll be back uh, next week, I think it is. He's still traveling, and he's getting a much-needed rest, and which is great for me because I, I like doing this. So I'm happy to be here. So, so um, today we have the amazing Sherry McGraw. Um, and I could, I couldn't be happier about this. Um, but first we want to, well, we'll actually let's get Sherry on so that Sherry can, there she is. Oh my God. There she is. Uh, Sherry, why don't you tell us what you're going to do today? Okay. Well, you know, uh, I, I gave it kind of a fantastic title, but, uh, but I have always been intrigued by drawing and that it seems so magical to me that there is so much that you can do with a simple line. So I'm, I, as you can see, I am uh, surrounded by my drawings and uh, I'm gonna do little demonstrations from some finished drawings to show you how I think about them. And so oh, the thinking behind Awesome. awesome. Be fun. So if you don't know who Sherry is, then you've been living under a rock, um, <laughs> but <laughs> she changed my life. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think we originally got together like with drawing, I think it was drawing and I'd never seen anything like this before, what she does, but, um, she's, she's a well loved instructor. Um, she was for many years with the art student league of New York, which, you know, that's like a storied past. Um, and another big thing, I can't believe it's going to be almost 10 years for this but that one woman show at the Butler Institute of American Art, and you received a Medal of Honor for a Lifetime Achievement in American Art. And there was only one other one that's been presented. So that was like amazing. And then you never even mentioned this, but that doctorate you received from the Academy of Art University, the honorary doctorate, uh, I mean, they don't just hand those things out like, you know, you don't pay for those things. Like, you know, like politicians pay for these honors. They don't, you didn't pay for this. They came to you and said, we want to give you this. So I'm still waiting for my phone call, but somehow I don't, I don't think I'm going to be getting one anytime soon, but I can only hope. The other thing I wanted to mention is uh, another life saving, uh, a life changing thing is your um, book, The Language of Drawing. Uh, I consider it a, a seminal work on drawing and you, you do anything but make drawing a dry subject. Um, and so I think people are going to be a little surprised today, uh, at what you have to say and what you're going to do. And is there anything else you want to share before we were cut away just to do a couple of things and, and then we'll get back to you. But I, I want people to know how to find you because I want to do it now because I know they're going to be blown away. And I, I, I don't want to leave it to the end. I want, it'll be in the comments, but I also want them to know now so they can write it down. So. Well, thank you, Joanne. I mean, uh, you know, we created Bright Light Fine Art because we wanted to archive David LaFell's work. So that's how his teaching. And so that's how it started, but it has really grown. Uh, we even have Joanne Manji as our one of our weekly atelier, and she's going to be our uh, in December. So she does a, a weekly class for you guys. Uh, but we, it has really grown. Uh, there's a lot there. So if you just go to brightlightfineart.com, um, you'll find it all. And and it's uh, I, I think the 
a big bargain <laughs> in art instruction. So, and you yeah. get my e-course there as well, my drawing e-course. So, yeah, awesome, awesome. Okay, we're just gonna cut away, do some housekeeping, and then then the stage is yours. Okay, all right. So today uh, we have uh, okay. Oh, is this the giveaway? A one-year digital subscription to Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine to get a chance to win the prize. Put comments in the comments where you're watching from and maybe say something clever. That always helps. Um, <laughs> like you could say, oh, I love this host. This is amazing host. You should have her back. Um, and then what about the, the last, the winner? Oh, Denise Clark of Weston, Vancouver, Washington. Uh, to get your subscription email, asl at streamlinepublishing.com. Congratulations, Denise. That's a, it's a great magazine. It is a beautiful magazine. It's a great magazine, but it's beautiful. It's so well done. And then today's prize is 10 Steps to Become a High-Level Figure and Portrait Artist. Uh, this is an amazing uh, offer. And so, I mean, this is a no brainer. Just uh, go to realismtoday.com slash ebook and you can download um, your free gift. And then don't forget, because I don't want to forget, but subscribe to Arts at Art School Live on YouTube uh, and follow Eric Rhodes at Eric Rhodes on Instagram. Um, yeah, see, it's up there. It's really good. Okay, because he loves this stuff. Did I tell you I don't really like Instagram? Okay, we're not going to go there. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's probably why I'm not rich and famous. Uh, anyway, so today uh, we get my face off the screen and go directly to Sherry, and you are going to be amazed, amazed. Go to it, Sherry. All right. Okay. And, and uh, they're going to insert the drawing that I'm going to be working from. So I, I uh, put all a lot of different drawings in different, you know, reclining, standing, sitting, kneeling, uh, foreshortening. And so I'm going to try to get to some of all of them and give you an idea of how you think about it when uh, models are in a certain position, because essentially what you're doing is you are, it uh, the model's pose is a problem and a, a beautiful visual problem. And if you're a draftsman, then you're learning how to solve that problem. So a reclining pose. So our first one there of, of David Matisse reclining, reclining. Okay, let's see, maybe I'll zero in a little bit more. Okay. Um, okay, so when, when somebody's reclining, then one, one of the the, the first things that I'm wanting to do is to get a sense of the surface that they are, that they're on, you know, so. Is that a, is that a Conti crayon or is that a pencil? What do yeah. You know? Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a Conti crayon. Let me okay. just put that over a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so, so that's kind of the first thing. You know, and in and in this case, he had you know his chest kind of kind of thrust up, so it had that kind of a feeling to it, right? And then and then what is happening is that the rib cage is coming off the surface. So when it's uh, reclining, I like to see when when the figure comes off the surface and comes that back and meets the surface. So so here, you know, he. Uh, to get the, the leg. And then of course, then the leg goes down off, off this. So even the knee coming up, you know, so it's like, you're trying to figure out the simplest way to figure this out, to figure out this particular problem. So he had, he was one of my favorite models. I haven't been able to, he, he left the profession and I, I can't get him back, you know, but oh. I know it's always so sad. Yeah. So then there's, there's all this tension and, and yeah, if you have any questions or anybody has any questions by, by all means. So you don't need to know anatomy to do this. Right. It's like you, what you want to do is you want to, um, you, you want to 
learn how, what drawing is first, and then your anatomical uh, knowledge and all of that that you start to glean when you're ready for it, then it'll help fine tune how you solve this problem. But, but what I'm trying to describe is really the process of solving the problem. You know, so it seems, you know, you, you can get so caught up in all of the um, anatomy and all of that stuff. And, you know, I, I, you know, but you don't, that, that's why you really want to wait in a sense, if you can, to know about anatomy. Some, some people already do, do have a lot of anatomical knowledge, uh, which is fine. But, uh, you know, generally, if you're, if you're learning too much anatomy too soon, um, it, it can kind of mess you up because then what you're doing is you're drawing anatomy and you're not, you're not actually, um, there we go. You're drawing anatomy and you're not, you're not really drawing the gesture of it. And, and that's really the whole, the whole idea of it. So, you know, and getting, you know, the head dropped off, you so know. how do you, how do you shut that off? You mean that that feeling that you need to be doing anatomy? Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's like anything. It's like uh, you know, in painting anything. You know, if you're getting caught up in all the minutia and not, you know, what's really important, then uh, you're missing what drawing is. So if you really would like to learn how to draw, you really have a you know an interest in what that is. And, uh, it, you know, it, for some reason, it was just always something I loved. I, I did it as a child. I copied old master drawings. I, you know, I just was kind of a, a boring teenager. Uh, and, but I loved drawing. <laughs> so anyway, and so the, the first thing that, I mean, David LaFell was my teacher. And so... Although in a funny way, he didn't teach me the way he was uh, doing it this for you, Joe, man. <laughs> which is kind of interesting. Um, anyway, so so what I'm showing you in a sense is how you would figure this out. So you take something that seems so complicated and, and you make it simple. Like one of my favorite little things to use is the nipple. You know, because the nipple will give you the, the corner of a figure. Um, it will tell you whether or not like an arm is upstretched, you know. So like if, if an arm is, is, is stretched up, it'll, it'll elongate, you know, like, like that. You know, so and then if it's going around the form, it's going to be doing, you know, this, you know, around the form like that. So it's just, there are little things that are tip-offs when you're looking at a, at a figure and you're trying to see it more that way if what you want to do is really become a draftsman, you know, so that, so the thing in my, you know, e-course and also in uh, my drawing book, you know, the language of drawing is that I, I talk about all the things that good draftsmen are always accounting for, all the things they're aware of. And so that's essentially what you're trying to do is just be aware of certain things. And if it's a reclining already, the radar is up and you know you've got to somehow figure out that surface when the form comes off the surface, goes back down on the surface, off the surface, you know, you know, off the, the so, so off the um, what do you what do you say about observational skills? Like you know how, like, with the drawing, they'll have, like, quick poses? Uh-huh. So um, it, it's hard to learn observation if you're doing everything so quickly. Is that correct? Or how do you, how do you deal with that? Like, well, it depends on what you mean by observational skills, because this is observational skills. See, it's like, I think what you might be talking about is copying, and that's not what you would want to do if you want to learn how to draw. You're not copying. You are understanding what's happening so you can figure out that pose or right. figure out your subject. Does that make sense? So, yeah. So 
So then, I mean, I, I was taught by you that the first thing was gesture. Yeah. And uh, that's but but it sounds simple, but it's not that simple. <laughs> like, like, because it took me a long time. To like, <laughs> like I go, Sherry, look, see, it's gesture. And you go, uh, no, not, not exactly. Well, because there's a lot of information. So it's so easy to get uh, caught up in things that don't, that aren't meaningful. And, and that's that that's what you're trying to do is find out the meaningful things because that's what good draftsmen have always done. They they've they've understood what's meaningful about the the subject and then that's what they do. So all right, so the, the next one I do believe is another reclining, and it's um, a female reclining. So I, I just kind of arbitrarily picked, you know, things that I thought would really work. Um in showing you guys. So, so this one is this uh, new model, which I just love her. She is tall and really interesting. And it was her first night. Um, okay, so like, like, like the other one, you know, I, I, I get a feeling of her on the surface. So the way I'm thinking about her is really, it's like I'm thinking about this whole hip, you know, her her rib cage, and then, um, of course, I'm always keeping track of this center line, so I'm always keeping track of that. But what I think is is beautiful, so you have like this bottom leg that's essentially in line with all of this. You know, then her head comes up. You know, so we have we have a uh, her head you know, essentially doing that. So she it's 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 up on the pillow. So that's kind of a different angle, right? And then you have this really dynamic arm. And so, you know, when I think about, you know, it's it's the muscles are engaged, which was just such a beautiful thing. You don't have to know these muscles, just do kind of little, little um, you know, at first. See, in other words, don't don't feel like you've got to know everything before you start. You don't have to know all that anatomy. You really can just think tension. And, and then, then what you learn is what happens when, when there's tension, you know, so, so when the muscles are engaged, you know, so you start to see some indication of bone, you know, and of course, any, anything that happens in the arm starts all the way back here in in the the scapula so so it's like and then of course you have these pillows kind of obscuring you know all of that so but but here so you have this leg in line with the whole figure and then you have for shortening and I'll go into for shortening a little bit more uh, with a, another another drawing but so you have this going back and then you have it coming forward. So, so this is, this is, this is coming, you know, forward. So uh, more, you know, more will come forward and, you know, less, less goes back. So again, I'll, I'll go into the, the for shortening, you know, more, but in this reclining, so I really thought of it as this whole, whole um, shadow plane, you know, this being tense, you know, she was holding on to a, a crook that was on, this, on something. And then, then you could get a little bit of the ins and outs here and just how it relates to the, to the, uh, to the torso there. So it's a very, you know, very simple way of, of conceiving of it. And so this, this is really how I'm thinking, you know, when I draw, this is, this is actually the, the thought process. So, you know, thinking about this top plane, all of this being on, you know, this side plane, you know, so then you get all the specifics 
you know, you get some tension and some of the twist going on here, a little bit of a twist. You know, so it's, you know, and then, then the more the more you happen to know about anatomy, then, then it just means that you'll be able to refine what you're drawing here much more easily, you know, because you'll, you'll have a, a, you know, more knowledge that will, that will help do it. But, you know, what I loved about, in a sense, what David did when he was my sub, which he was so sweet of him to do that, uh, is, uh, is that he he made it very accessible. So it's so interesting. He was my drawing teacher. I really think of he was my drawing teacher. He was the one that got me to draw dimensionally. And my, but mainly when he uh, was teaching me, he just drew for me. So you know, I learned from that, and then learned from primarily Van Dyke because that's that's who you know I was looking at Van Dyke, Da Vinci, you know, and uh, and so I was you know, seeing that they, they did something more specific, more quickly, you know what I mean? So uh, that's, that's what I, <clears throat> that's what I've learned in a sense, even though David was my teacher. So, so it's kind of oh, interesting. You didn't squiggle. You didn't squiggle. <laughs> I know he, he, he didn't squiggle back then, but, but he's squiggling now. So yeah. Anyway, so, so. Um, Matt, uh, Matt was asking, uh -huh. um, if you could explain, and I don't know how quickly you can do that, but uh, the difference between the language of drawing and the language of painting. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, okay. that, that's a really fabulous question because um, so the language of, of drawing is linear and you have to look at it up close because it was always a very intimate thing. You would come into the artist's studio and you would see the drawings and you'd see them up close. Painting, the intention for painting was always different. You know, the early patrons were the kings and the churches. And so you had to be able to see that painting from the back pew. You had to be able to see it from across a, you know, 200 foot room. You know, you, you had to see from a distance. And so that it, plain and simple is why they're different. So you uh, in painting, you think more shapes. And in drawing, it's linear and you model in the shadow, you model in the light. It's all about understanding form. It's all about understanding. And that is why it has traditionally been the, um, the foundation for every artist, because it gives you the understanding in an incredibly simple medium, which I think does do the impossible at times. It's like, how can you make it seem like a real life human person? And it's just lying, you know, so, uh, so, so that's very simple. Well, I, I'm just realizing that drawing could satisfy that need <laughs> that a lot of us have to model in the shadow because you're not supposed to model in the shadow with painting. Well, but, yeah, you know, you model uh, to your heart's content in drawing. Exactly. And Joanne, that is exactly why everybody wants to model in the shadow and painting, because it's the most natural medium. I mean, when we were kids. We drew. Everybody drew. Everybody always draws when they start out. So it's a medium and a language that we're just really comfortable with. It's something we really know. And then once we start to try to get better as draftsmen, then it's like, oh, you know, it's like we don't know anything. But in fact, we do. We know this language incredibly well. So you're but right. To be, then, a, to be a draftsman, though, you have to know what needs to go in and what you don't need to do. And, yeah. and, and not just that, but I've learned, I can't do this myself, but what I've learned is that sometimes you have to make something, almost make it up to make it read the way you want it to read. Is that, I don't know if I said it right, but it, it well, I, I'm not sure that you're actually making up stuff as much as you are seeing to the heart of something and you're seeing what is necessary to go in as opposed to just everything you see and just how quickly and how much time you have, you know, to copy it and put it in that that's not draftsmanship because right. it's not teaching you the understanding that actually makes you a good draftsman, you know, so and, and so that's 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 the difference. So, so I'll just sit here and be depressed. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> All right. So the next one, I, I don't know why I did this to myself, but um, but th this was actually a five-minute pose, if you can imagine. And uh, oh, wait, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Now, this is going to be the the standing pose, right? Yeah, the standing. Uh, pose. One of my favorite, favorite, yeah. one of favorite models. She's not not living here anymore. So anyway, so it's a a, a standing pose. So. Um, okay. So Alyssa, she was just a fabulous model. So in a standing pose, you're always needing to figure out where that the supporting legs are. And, you know, once you're, you're, um, once you have drawn enough and, uh, you can actually not even have the legs in and it will feel like it's balanced and, and standing there. So, and I, I have a few examples, other examples here, or yeah, a couple more that, that would give you that idea. But anyway, so so you want to know. So, you know, I, I kind of see this in terms of like angles. So, so she's kind of angled this way, you know, her neck coming back. And then what's happening is that it's like if I were to just, just simplify it, it's like having a a box. I know you guys, Joanne has certainly seen me do this. So it's it's like taking the torso and really simplifying it and just seeing it this way as just a box that's bending. And because of that, you get little folds of skin, which is exactly what she had. And then her supporting leg, and then this other leg going off, you know, so so essentially that is how I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about, you know, this whole, whole, you know, top plane, the fact that it's bending. And then this, so don't, don't get all fooled by all the ins and outs because she is nicely, you know, curved. You know, later you'll come in with that. But first you want to understand that this is this box that is, bending and so because of that anytime you see little folds then you know that that is really is really bending so so then here you know giving her the weight on the leg that being forced out so we have this feeling of you know the weight on that leg we're keeping track of the center line right so um okay so we're keeping track of that and that's going to tell us where the little uh, parting of the the cheeks is right and then when there's weight on something you're going to have a little bit stronger stronger line there and again you know when you know things you can leave them out and, and, it, and they're actually still there um and then you know, and then how the muscles will kind of bulge because there's, this is really the supporting leg, you know, so, and then, and then this again, that all of these have a fair amount of, a, you know, for shortening, but, but we'll get into that at the very end. So, you know, and then that back leg and then, and then this arm coming forward so again, you go back to the scapula. So there's the evidence of the scapula. And then again, you're, you're kind of walking it out like you're like it's a cylinder coming forward. And then this going back, a cylinder going back, you know, so. So. And, and the whole trick, you know, I'll just give you a little hint ahead of time of foreshortening is that it's got to, it's got to get your eye to go around. So we'll, we'll get more into that, you know, so even like this arm that's way off, you know, we'll be getting, you know, a form to overlap a form, you know, to overlap a form, you know, so that. You know, the ear is a great thing to put in, you know, and then you put all the information onto it. So, 
So that that's how I'm thinking about it. That's visually how I'm thinking about it. But when you're in the throes of it, of course, and I mean, I'm showing you some of my favorite drawings. So you're seeing you're totally in it. And uh, sorry about that. Yeah, you're totally in it. <clears throat> and and that's when the magic can happen. That's when like amazing things can happen. So <clears throat> anyway, so any, if there's no questions, I'll go on. So standing, the main thing is really just getting that supporting leg. Uh, if there's any foreshortening and arm coming forward, getting the angle of the head. So really this kind of angle, you know, with, with, with the, the body going like that, and then the weight on that leg, and then that leg going away, you know. So it's just a, a real simple way to, to think about it. So. Okay, good. All right. So, okay, great. Okay, so we'll go to the next one. And how are we doing for time? Are we uh, we're good. So, uh, well, we're uh, we're probably like halfway. So, wait. There's just a question. Karen Schumacher wants to know: artists who draw always seem to have a very short drawing pencil or whatever. Is that so the hand can feel the paper? Oh, wh why? Why do? Me or let's see. Oh, why do artists always draw? Seem to have a short drawing pencil. Is that so the hand can feel the paper? I've never really noticed that. Yeah, I haven't either. Because actually, you know, like I've got this long pencil. Yeah. Which I could do, but but it is you know drawing is kind of like this. I mean, you can you can draw like that. I to be honest, I I'm using this um, Conte stick because I just thought it would be more you could see it more easily. It's a little hard to see drawing sometime because again, you need to be really close up. <laughs> but anyway, but I, I could, I, I, I could just as easily use that. So, so that's all right. Okay. Okay. Right, great. Yeah. <gasps> okay. Yeah. So, you know, this is not really talking about gesture. I'm not talking about gesture. Yeah. <laughs> so don't confuse me so so because you know you know gesture <laughs> isn't it all about gesture well it is and everything i've been doing is the gesture no i know that but yeah. i want people to understand that like, yeah oh, okay no no that that's that's a good question so so I'm I'm playing devil's advocate here i i usually try oh, to ask okay. questions even if i know the answer well I may not know the answer, but I act like I know the answer. So, like, <laughs> well, okay. So, so what it is in, is that in order to do a gesture, you you need to um, you need to have some way of figuring this out. You have to have a way of figuring out the pose. So, like, even in a two minute uh, gesture pose, I will. You know, like I'll I'll show you some some two minute gesture poses. So, okay. So <clears throat> let's see. Let, let's let's zero way in, and I'll sh I'll show you these. Th these aren't in your thing, but um, okay. So, like for instance, like this one. This was a reclining one. So I'm showing you the surface. I'm showing it, see, this is how I'm thinking about it. So his whole torso on the surface, the leg coming up off the surface, the arm coming up off the surface, the head on the surface, you know, the nipple stretched around the torso. So it's like, and so it takes me a little time to look at that and figure it out. I'm, I'm quicker now, you know, than I was in the beginning, but you, you need to, in other words, if you spent, 30 seconds or a minute looking at the at the subject and in the pose before you started drawing you'd learn more quickly and you'd learn it more easily because you'd be seeing the the gesture of it so like you know this particular one was interesting because uh, his arms were straight up right so i just saw this is all one plane of light 
So with, with his thighs, they were kind of all together, you know, you know, and again, the nipple, you can see that nipple really stretched out like that. Yeah. You know, so that tells you that the arms are stretched up, you know, so it was a simple pose, but in other words, and this became a down plane. So this yeah. is down plane, you know, these are under planes, you know, the head was tilted down, you know, it's all simple, but it's, but it gives you, you know, gives you a sense of, of, of what's happening. And so that, so the essence of what I'm doing for you guys is this, and it's just figuring out how to figure this out. So like this becomes all one plane, it's all lit up, right? Uh, the uh, sacrum, those, those little dimples in the sacrum are always great. They're great little landmarks to use, you know, where the cheeks divide, that is perfect. It gives you this uh, center line. This is a whole underplane. You know, this is a form bending. So the, the, the leg is bending from the torso. And so we get these little creases. Creases are fabulous. You know, this shows that tension of that leg being stretched out. You know, this shows you that it's actually going back, that the whole back is going back. And then, of course, the head is kind of buried. So that just gives us even more knowledge that that head is back there. Wow. So, so essentially, that, that's what you're always doing, is, is you're always trying to figure out what the gesture is of it. Okay. You know, so. so wow. But, but this is how you think about it so that you can start to figure it out. And, and, and so that your, your time drawing doesn't feel like you're just racing the clock because I mean, you know, counterintuitively, the more time you take to study the pose, the, the better you're going to get because you're taking it in. You're trying to understand it. Right. Um, you know, as opposed to just copy it really quickly. That that's not drawing. And no good draftsman ever thought that way. <laughs> I mean, they may have when they first began yeah. their master yeah. taught them how to draw. Yeah. But but this is this is how you this is what it is. This is what drawing is. So wow. wow. Okay. Can we we just need to take a little break? Okay. So I can digest what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> Because, because like I'm hurting right now, so <laughs> my brain's hurting. Um, but no, it's uh, like that was that that two minute pose, like that, particularly the one of him, uh, his back, and he's squatting. And I mean, all the information you just pointed out was like bl just blew me away. It's it is, it's amazing, it's amazing. I, I, I can see, but you know, even more so was when you said. I mean, I know this, but when you said that you can model, you model in the drawing, like you can model as much as you want in the drawing. And that's why we want to model in the painting. But that's what ruins a painting is because people are trying to over model in the shadow. So that right there was worth the price of admission. Anyway, OK, so um, I just uh, I just want to say a couple of things and then we're going to do a little thing on uh, to let you know about Realism Live. Um, first of all, because I, I I forget, but I have a workshop uh, starting actually this Friday. It's uh, Zooming Zoo Animals. It's a live feed from the Beardsley uh, Zoo in Connecticut. It's the third year we're doing it. And uh, it's the month of November and um you might want to check it out on my website or go to Scottsdale Art School. It's a lot of fun. The education department gets involved. They, we do live streaming. It's and then I paint, and it's it's like it's amazing. It really is. Um, and then I have videos, but we'll put that in the uh, in in the chat. You'll you'll see links to that because Christmas is coming, and there are going to be a lot of people that would really love to have that video. So um, you might want to think about that as a gift. Um, and so the other thing that's going on, this is huge, is uh, Realism Live. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's coming up in another week. And I have to tell you something about these online um, uh, convention things that Eric does. He, he's, he's the 
standard at these things. Um, and he's pulled together a team and, and you know how good, I mean, he's a visionary. He is, but these things are pulled off by the staff that he has. And he has amazing, amazing people working for him. And they've been with him for a very long time. So that's how you know. That's how I know what a great guy he is, is because of the longevity of his employees. And they're so talented. They're so, they're, uh, they're idea people. And they'll maybe uh, pass something off on him. And what do you think about this idea? And he goes, run with it. And he, and he lets them do it. And so he comes up with these amazing, like, you know, the plein air convention, but then there's plein air live, there's realism live, watercolor live, pastel live, whatever. And this season, this is the season for realism live. And if you've never done it before, if you've done it before, you don't need to hear from me, but but because you know how amazing it is. But if you haven't done it, you should really think about it. The, I've seen other things online, but really Eric's got it figured out. He he knows how to attract really good people to teach. Uh, the whole thing builds community. I mean, there's a whole community that's been doing this art school live since the pandemic and um, dream, Dreamline Artists. And if you haven't joined them on Facebook, you, you should look them up because it's a wonderful um, community to feedback. You can post things, it's whatever. And then they're always involved in these live presentations. So we're going to play a, a video. Um, and it's 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 not an in your face video, but it'll show you. We, we just had a, a graphics on. But now, Amandine, play the video for the Realism Live. Welcome to Realism Live. Welcome to Realism Live. Welcome to Realism Live. This is my lesson for Realism Live. Welcome to today's lesson. Welcome to my class. I hope you enjoy this demo. Let's get started. You have an opportunity to go to an art conference online, and this is it. For the next three days, we're here to make you better and to inspire you you're going to experience massive growth this week. This is the best possible opportunity to really push yourself to the next level. You can do this. I absolutely loved it. More than met any expectations. I keep finding myself going, this is truly amazing. I learn something new every time. It's therapy. Just when you think it can't get any better, it really does. It just keeps getting better. This experience has been a game changer, not only for your art, but for one's life. People who can't travel or afford to travel or go to workshops out there are able to learn from all these different artists right from our own studios and homes. What you're going to get over the next few days will blow your mind, but it's also going to take you further than you ever thought. There's landscape painting, there's portraits, there's still life. Like I'm getting a little bit of everything and I am very excited about that. You guys are giving me more tools to put in my toolbox. I appreciate certain things on a whole new level. I get all these great artists teaching me all these do new things, but I get to sleep in my own bed tonight. So many fantastic artists, master artists who are sharing all their expertise. The artists, what they bring is just shocking. It's the whole day just flew through and it's so fast because it's so much to take in. You have the best of the best out there. So many of these people you can't even get to. You cannot get to them. They all have so much to offer and everything's so different. Everybody today has been amazing all in their own different ways. I learned so much. Every single artist I have an aha moment from. I learned something from everybody today and I've been painting for 36 years. I just loved it. I've never done this before, but it's so new to me. It's been class. And new friends too. There's people here that I have become very good friends with. To meet other people in this. So the total immersion is definitely the way to go. Really incredible to see people connect with them. Go to every breakout room. Talk to everybody. 
Try every single thing, even if you think you can't do it, put that aside. It just has been a real lifesaver through this whole time. I have just incredibly appreciated all you've done. So it's all true. Um, I, 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 it might have gotten a little long-winded there, but but with you know the participants, but it, it is all true. Everything that they said. So um, it's not hype. It's the real deal. Um, enjoy it, but also don't forget I have my workshop too. So you might want to do that. And oh, and look at this. You get a ten percent off uh, the uh, registration with code Mangi M A N G I. So um, you should try it. If you haven't done it, try it. And if you've already tried it, I know you've already signed up. So um, we're going to get back to Sherry. And Sherry, take the time that, oh, I see you made yourself busy while we were away. So um, I'm not going to kick you off. I want you to, you know, do more. I'll just tell Amandine. And then they'll yell at me, but not you, because I think it's all important. I, I think all, already I've learned. I mean, I know this stuff, but I feel like I've learned more because it's like reinforcing what I what I already know. So, so go uh, to it. So, so how much time do you think we got? Uh, I don't know. I'll discuss it with. It. There won't be any yelling involved. Amandine just said there won't be any yelling involved. She <laughs> says ten minutes. How about fifteen? <laughs> Come on, Amandine. Fifteen is fifteen good? Fifteen good for you? She says fine. How about 20? How about 20? <laughs> okay, 15. Go ahead. I'll shut up now. Okay. All right. So I'll I I so this was actually a five-minute pose. And um it just was ended up being one of my favorite things. So uh it, it's just she's such a special model and has really unusual poses. So this is a kneeling pose where she, so she's on all fours and it was so simple, but I thought the light was so fabulous that I on it on the planes. And so that's the other thing too, is that when you're seeing the pose, you're really assessing what you find beautiful about it. And then you, then you figure out how to do it. So all I did was put a tone uh, with, you know, with the Conte stick. And then I used a, uh, a chamois and then that is well used there and then just kind of smoothed out the, and so it's a, it's a, a really cheap way to get a tone paper. So it's something to think about. And I, I had a, I was working on a light paper at the time, <clears throat> as you can see. Anyway, so, so, you know, in, in a sense, what I really saw was that there was just this simple form for her her torso right so it was just a very simple form for the torso with the light hitting this top top plane so i just used my my kneaded eraser and just brought the light out on this and up here on the shoulder okay so i just i did that so then here there was a, a little bit of a, a crease, you know, from the, her back leg, you know, where she was kneeling. So just, you know, bringing that down and up like that. This, which is again, you know, there's, there's tension because you have, you have so weight, you know, she definitely had, had weight on this, So in kind of a little bit double jointed there, I didn't even get to put in that much more, but just that little bit of, you know, sh sharp kind of bulging lines will give you the feeling of weight being on something, you know, and then of course she had weight on, on this, this, this back arm, same thing, you know, just a little bit of, of that, um, 
hope you guys can see. Yeah. Uh, bulging gives you the idea that there's weight on it. And then she just has, she's tall and just has this beautiful, um, elegant neck looking up under the chin, you know, the head coming back. And then again, uh, there wasn't much of the ear showing, but a little bit of the ear. And then of course, you know, and, and again, this was five minutes, so it wasn't. So you can see I took quite a bit of time just seeing what was going on with it. So a little bit of light on this top plane, a little bit of light on that muscle there. Um, and, and that was, that was the pose, you know, so. But you could see it's not, it doesn't have to be that complicated. You know, you can, you can really, really simplify, you know, what, what you're seeing. Yet all the information's there. Right, right. Even without having the whole leg there. It's like if anything comes out of the right place for an arm, we know it's an arm no matter what we do there. <laughs> if it comes out of the place where the leg would be, we know there's a leg there. You know, so so you're 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 really trying to boil it down to the absolute, you know, minimum that you have to have to do in order to in order to make it make it believable so so how, how do you describe a lively line a lively line <laughs> yeah. well you know uh that's a good question because um you know essentially uh i know people are always pretty concerned about trying to get beautiful line quality but line quality is really something that is a byproduct of the honest way in which you are approaching drawing. And so what I mean by honest is that you truly are trying to understand something. You're not trying to show off. You're not trying to make a, you know, a line that's going to impress people. You know, you're not trying to do anything like that. You're actually just trying to capture something, you know? And, you know, you may think that this is something that is off in the future and, and really inaccessible to you. And it's not. It's not. I've seen people just starting but grasp a certain quality, like, let's say, weight. You know, my sister, Debbie, did a little bit of drawing with me along the way, uh, studied with me. And... And she kind of had a sense of weight always, you know, because it was something she was very aware of. So it was just, and she really got weight in her drawings, you know, so it really is trying to uh, awaken your awareness of a lot of different qualities so that then it gets into your drawing and then you have good line quality and, and it's alive and <clears throat> the line is alive, you know, but it's not because you're doing something you know and trying to you know like impress somebody with some sort of you know flippy thing <laughs> or something but that you're actually you're actually honestly trying to capture something all right <coughs> no more questions so squiggling isn't the way to go <laughs> <laughs> squiggling <laughs> like, oh, no, no, you can squiggle you can squiggle i'm just saying that it's like no no, I, I, yeah. no 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 i mean i think it's 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 a relevant thing to say uh you know david has beautiful line quality and that was that was what i i looked at you know his you know but it, again it was just very honest trying something not being afraid yeah. and i think that one of the other byproducts of learning how to draw well is that you aren't afraid. Yeah. You know, well, so. you know, I noticed that though, even when he was squiggling, if he put a line in over it, the oh, line yeah. quality was just yeah. so yeah. beautiful. He, he is but, a consummate draftsman, but yeah. he, he does show you he, and I, 
in other words, they're not exclusive. They're not mutually exclusive, what I'm talking about. Yeah. He was my teacher. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> well, he didn't really teach me those things. He, yeah. Oddly, because he wasn't really teaching drawing. So I would just bring my drawings into the painting class and he would, you know, tell me stuff. Yeah. And I so, didn't. So sure. are, are you going to do foreshortening? You said you were going to do some more foreshortening. Well, I, and I do we have time for the seated one, too? I was going to do just a yeah, do the seated one and do the foreshortening. And then and then I got to kick you out. Oh, you do? OK. <laughs> oh, well, well, then maybe we ought to do foreshortening because that's actually more relevant. Yeah. OK, let's do that. Well, one. Let's hop to the to the foreshortening. OK. okay. Great. OK, so so the, the thing about foreshortening is that and I don't know which one of them you, you could even on the day. I don't know which one you want to put up, but. Um, OK, so I'm getting the hook, getting the hook already. OK, is that in, in foreshortening <clears throat> what you want is is you want to think in terms of basically a cylinder. You know, so you're you're thinking about a cylinder that's got stripes around it, you know, and so that cylinder is going back. So whatever is near is stronger. And and then and then this concept allows you to then find a form that then overlaps another form that then overlaps another form. And so that's the whole idea is that you you get the eye to go inside the form so that we don't get caught on this outline and just think that it's a short thing. It's actually becomes foreshortened. So essentially what you would do is, um, so Amandine, I don't know if you want to put up any of the reclining ones. I, I, I sent you a couple, I could, I could do either one, but they actually are, okay. Is that- uh, well? Okay, I did that one. Let's see. It, it would be one, one of the last ones I gave you. So, so oh, that okay. One? Oh, okay, the three last ones. Okay, yeah, that's okay. So, so this particular one is interesting because uh, it was a reclining, but it, again, a very tall guy and, um, and long, you know, limbs and everything. So, so, you know, it's really thinking about, you know, well, first of all, that the, the whole thing is going back like that, right, essentially. But the whole, you know, rib cage is up, then coming off, you know, off th this form, and then it's it's up onto it, something else. So, so we're looking at the, at the, at the, the pelvis there. We're looking at, you know, this nipple showing the corner of the figure. We're looking at, at, at the head coming down and being on this surface. We're looking at the, the leg coming up off the surface like that. Different guy, and all of this getting the same, same light. So his, his, his leg being all part of this lit. It, I mean, this is pretty simple, isn't it really? It's like a really simple way to think about it. Joanne. <laughs> I love foreshortening. I, I, I learned when I learned foreshortening from you and then I, I was like, I used to be afraid of it. And then once I learned it from you, uh, I, I look forward to finding things that are foreshortened. I mean, I that's how much fun. I think it is. It becomes so much fun. You know? Yeah. So even like if I just do some strokes like that and then, yeah. and then end in the, the, where the wrist is and then put the hand back behind it, then, then that's, you know, then that, that gives us that foreshortening and then giving an elbow up close, you know, some of the tension there on that arm. So as something comes more forward, it's it's bigger, right? Yes, yes. So, so uh, more information and more information. 
Yes, exactly. So, so, you know, more comes forward, less goes back. And, but this is how I thought about that. And again, it was, it was just one of the funnest, funnest drawings to do. I just really love doing it. And then of course his, his hand on top of, you know, his belly. So then that, that becomes like a whole little add on, but, but this is essentially one plane. This plane comes off of it, becomes darker, you know, and then this also a little bit darker. And the, the darkness, the tone will bring it forward. So that's one thing. Um, so let me ask you a question then. Uh -huh. This is going to be confusing. Um, I know that the tone, it, it makes it come forward because there's more information. But what about that leg in the back that you, you've put like some, you know, made it darker? Yeah, yeah. So you don't want to make yourself kind of crazy, uh, you know, comparing values and trying to think, oh, no, but that's darker than that. And, and uh, just look at your drawing, see what's happening. <laughs> just look at the drawing and, and what's working. And it, it, usually what, what it is, is that it's just a matter of like this coming in front of that. Yeah. Okay. This coming in front of that. Yeah. And this showing that it's a different plane okay okay so, but it's all kind of more uh, yeah. level in a sense can you tilt your camera up a little bit uh-huh amandine said tilt your camera up a little bit although i see everything no nah, i don't know i see everything okay yeah okay yeah no yeah. that's the only thing that would confuse me is that you know how so so it would just be like that back leg wouldn't have it might have extra tone on it but not as much of the arm that's more forward yeah. is that what it is or it don't might. make yourself crazy right. you know it might it's just it's in other words it's in another universe when it's over here in a way okay. it's really when this overlaps the pelvis when this is in front of that you know and yeah okay that, the chest you know it's like and just if you look at your drawing, you'll see, you'll see it's, and, and to be honest, you know, if you look at a lot of old master drawings, I mean, they'll get it wrong a lot of times Yeah. and, and it'll be, it, it won't work as well. Yeah. You know, so they weren't, uh, they weren't all geniuses and, and, and everything they did was right. They were human beings. And yes. so sometimes they do things like I, I saw a show of, um, of uh, uh, Rubens in uh, in uh, uh, at the Met in New York City, and uh, and there was one drawing that a collector had actually thought that he could just add a few little marks to. <laughs> oh no! Some dark places, uh, little lines that were absolutely not where they should be. Oh my God! Yeah, I know it. It was you know. So anyway, I like that. That was. That wow. was startling. But wow. yeah, it's just like, and so nobody's perfect. And it's not, you know, sometimes you'll you'll do things that just don't quite work, you know. But oh, well, I think you're perfect. So <laughs> <laughs> you should know that by now. Well, anyway, right. this has been fun. You can kick me off. <laughs> no, yeah, well, I, yeah. I mean, I keep going. I I I I enjoyed it myself. I I I there were a ton of comments, but I didn't really get to see them. I'll read them after, but a, a lot of people really um in, enjoyed it. That's why I was distracted. I I was reading comments on the iPhone. <laughs> but um but yeah, no, this has been great. I appreciate you um just uh, rescheduling and coming back because I was really looking forward to having you on. Well, I knew you meant yeah. it when you said I wasn't off the hook. So I, I well, knew it was coming. You know, <laughs> I, I, I was just amazed that David bailed me out. It was, it was great. But to have both of you, I mean, really, I don't have to do anything else now. I mean, I've done it all. So. <laughs> All right. So, um, so again, uh, they'll be in the comments, how to, how to see Sherry and don't forget about, Oh, hi, California. Oh, Is right. It okay. So yeah, we're about to head out to, a, a Oh, hi film festival. Uh, David's documentary is going to show on November 4th at one o'clock at the Ojai Film Festival. We'll be there. David is going to do a Q&A afterwards. If you happen to be somewhere in the neighborhood and you want to come by, we'd love to see you. Yeah, that's great. great. 
that's great. So, um, you know, tomorrow's ha Halloween. So um, I just wanted to get this in. Like, <laughs> I'm with the program. So <laughs> happy Halloween. Happy um, Halloween. Thank Thank you. Fun. Yeah, thanks, Sherry. I, 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 from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for doing this. And like I said, I, I don't know about anybody else, but I learned, I know what I'm doing this afternoon. So, um, but like, seriously, I am. I'm, yeah, I'm dry. It's so much fun. It'll help your pain. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I agree with that. So, all right. Thanks. We'll see ya. And oh, and Eric, we're going to, where in the world is Eric? We have a little thing for about Eric. I'm indeed. Where am I? Well, I'm at the closing dinner of the Fine Art Connoisseur Fine Art Trip. We have all of our collectors and artists together tonight at the Ritz, and we're having a wonderful dinner, saying goodbye and talking about our plans for next year, which we'll announce soon. Anyway, just wanted to check in. Thanks. Bye-bye. Wow. He's looking good, huh? I th this trip did him well. So he needed it. He needs because uh, when he's uh, back for Realism Live, he'll get no sleep because the thing goes like morning, noon, night. So don't forget about Real Realism Live. Uh, don't forget about my workshop, online workshop coming up. I had a lot of people that requested it, so we're doing it. And next week, Cindy Barron. No, wait, is it next week or? Uh, yeah, week it is up. this week. Oh, it's this week. Okay, so Cindy Barron is uh gonna uh host and look at the lineup she's got wow oh i'll have to watch patricia watwood that's gonna be really good so uh thanks again for having me back uh i i've just had a lot of fun i hope you guys enjoyed it and don't forget you can see all the replays art school live eric rhodes he's the guy signing out joanne Manji. see you later guys